In today's video, I wanna show you guys on how you can make a simple invoice in Google Sheets that you can use to lock transactions for your customers and clients. But later on towards the video, I will take it a step further on how you can fully automate this so you can save customer database and item database, their description and its defined price so you don't have to type it over and over again per invoice. With that being said, without further ado, let's just jump right in. Okay, so here I am on a new Google Sheets document now. We're gonna start creating the invoice. And the first thing I wanna do is obviously I wanna title it. So I wanna go ahead and type an invoice here for a cell B2. Now I'm just gonna leave some gaps here on the top just for some formatting purposes later. But yeah, we're gonna start with invoice over here. And I'm gonna go one cell down and actually write down, you know, your company, my company, whatever it is. So um, here's my information. So let's just say Jeremy Satorials is the company. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just bolt the cell. Uh, it's completely optional. This is just all formatting, right? And I'm gonna type in my address. So for example, 123 Sesame Street, um, you know, city. So Los Angeles, California. Put your zip code here and then I am in the United States. You can put in your postal code, your country. Now go ahead and actually drag this column C a little bit wider now. So that way we have a little bit more spacing to the next uh, item. And this is gonna be crucial for the actual invoice later on. I'm gonna go ahead and write down invoice two. So who are we invoicing this invoice to? Well, I'm gonna type in, you know, company name, whoever it is, uh, you know, what other company, your client, customer. Um, I'm gonna type in their street address here, city, state here, postal code and country here, all on cell E or uh, column E that is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and type in here uh, on column G after you know creating a space here on, on F, uh, the invoice number and uh, the date as well. So today's date or invoice date, doesn't matter what it is. And yeah, there it is. So we just created a very simple invoice uh, you know, format now. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create the actual invoice itself, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to column B I'm gonna go per column here. So how I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do item and I'm gonna hit tab. So it goes to the next column to the right. I'm gonna type in description, hit tab again. Uh, this one I'm gonna do quantity. I'm gonna hit tab, let's do price, let's do tax and let's do amount. Now exactly what this is is obviously an itemized invoice, right? So you have, uh, you write your item here, what the description of the item is, you know, whatever notes you have for that item, how much that person or your customer or client bought, um, the price, the uh, tax percentage, if applicable, you can leave it to zero and then amount. Now, again, it's very important that we set this price column here to uh, format as a currency. Uh, same with this amount as well. Let's format that as a currency. So whatever price you put in later, 20 bucks, it'll be, you know, uh, in dollar amount, right? And then column F tax will just make it a percentage. And there you go. So we basically have a very, very simple invoice. And then that was just done in a couple minutes, right? So let's just, now let's work the formulas here. I'm, if anything, I'm just gonna go ahead and select all these rows here. Let's do like 10 rows or something, or maybe 15 rows, go up to 26. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and resize these rows here. So the default size is 21, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it to maybe about 30. So that way it fits a little bit better. Now this time around, I'm gonna go ahead and write down the formula. The really the only formula that we would kind of need uh, to make this invoice a functional invoice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit this equal sign to start a formula. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna obviously do the quantity here. We're gonna multiply this quantity. So do the um, asterisk for multiplication. Take that and I multiply it by the price. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply that with the tax amount and the formula for tax is gonna be um, one right so parentheses one plus the tax amount here so it's going to be for example we have you know five percent tax is going to be quantity times price times 1.05 and that's going to be the after tax amount right that's just how taxes work it's just going to be one point you know whatever tax percentage is and that's going to be your total price hit enter and we should have this zero dollars amount here now you can go ahead and drag it all the way down to row 26. That was our st stopping point here and perfect. So now we have a clean invoice. So we have, for example, um, an item we're going to do leather boots, um, you know, description, nice leather boots made for winter. I don't know. Um, and then we, we bought five leather boots, for example, at about 20 bucks a piece. And it's going to be, you can see here, it automatically calculates to $100. 
and you can do a tax amount of let's just say i don't know 10 percent for goods and taxes so there you go it's going to be 110. so now the only thing that we have left is here is we're going to have a uh, total right and this total amount here is going to be equals to right like we're doing we're doing another formula here it already knows here excel already knows that it wants to do a sum formula which is really smart but i'm just going to type it manually anyways so equals to sum in case you guys don't have it um sum and you can go ahead and click and drag these columns here and then close the parentheses so now we have equals sum g11 to g26 enter and then there you go so here's our total we're gonna also have a discounts uh, field here in case we are offering any type of discounts, you know, any type of promotions, the discounts would go here. And then write the two cells underneath that, I'm gonna go ahead and write down grand total, and that will be equal to the total itself minus any type of discounts that you guys are offering to your customer. And there you go. So we have a fully functional invoice here. I'm gonna go ahead and bold these down here so now we know. Now, this is the total this is the grand total you can even change the color of the cell so like you can make it like yellow or something or make the total even uh, yellow again whatever color you want to make it so it's easier to see i'm going to go ahead and in, uh, enlarge this invoice right here and bold it as well and i'm going to go ahead and change the top uh cells color to maybe blue or whatever color you want it to be right so it's just a nice little invoice and now when you go ahead and try to print it or save it as a PDF, it will come out really, really nice. Now, what you can do here is you can do portrait, right? And then you can do um, formatting and uncheck show grid lines. So then now it looks like a legit invoice. It doesn't have that like cells, right? And again, the invoice number, invoice date, you can feel free to bold these as well. And now you have a fully functional invoice in about six or seven minutes time, right? Okay, but now we can go ahead and automate this invoice. So we're not done just yet, but we can. what we can actually do is we can start automating the invoice. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that if we have an item, we're already gonna have a table of items and a table of even you know, customers list. So that way you don't have to keep typing everything manually and rather instead it will just pull from that data, right? So what I'm gonna do here is actually, I'm gonna rename this sheet on the bottom. So instead of sheet one, I'm gonna rename it to just invoice. And then I'm gonna create a new sheet actually, and we're gonna call this just um, like data, database. So in this database, we're gonna have a couple columns. I'm gonna create an item column. I'm gonna create a description column, and I'm gonna create a price column for that uh, item as well. So that way we can remain, uh, things can just remain constant. Like we don't have to keep retyping it over and over again if you have multiple invoices that you're creating. Same with the customer database. We can do um, customer name here, customer street address, right? And then we can do uh, customer city state and then customer zip code and country, right? So now that we have this, we can just bold all of row one here. This is just, this is again, this, the customer won't be able to see this. This is just for our own internal data right so i want to go ahead and bold this uh top row here so for example let's just say we're gonna make an item and we're gonna do the same thing leather boots right so let's do leather, leather boots and again capitalization does kind of matter here when we're gonna input it later to our data so uh, keep that in mind okay so capitalization does matter the for the item name here uh which i will put in yellow um, and for customer name here, the spelling will matter along with um, capitalization, right? So leather boots, uh, a great pair of leather boots um, for the cold weather. And you know, for our leather boots, we will always it will always be forty bucks. And the price, you can also again select column C and format it as a price. That works as well. And so that will remain consistent. You know, you can name it whatever. You can use a SKU number like one, two, three, four, five. Once you know anything that's a unique identifier for your item, right? So now what we can do is when we get an invoice, now we can go over here and we can do on the description. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called a V lookup. Okay. So what a V lookup is, it's basically gonna look up vertically, a vertical lookup 
of uh, a certain amount of defined range that you will pick and it will kind of get through the index um, of that range. So let me, it's kind of confusing. Let me get to actually show you how it is. So, so let's do an equal here. V lookup, right? Open parentheses. So what are we looking up? What is the search key we're looking up? Well, we're going to look up whatever we put in here, right? And then where is our range? Well, our range is going to be in our next sheet here, database. So let's click here and we're going to create this to be our range. So um, instead of selecting that, I'll do A to shift click C. So I'm doing A, shift click to C. So that way it will actually vertically look up all the way down here to, I don't know, an infinite amount of um, rows or however many Google Sheets has. And I'm gonna hit uh, a comma here to pick the index and the index will be two because the item will be the first index and the second index will actually be the description and then we can close it off here and hit enter and that should go here right you can see how it becomes na now why is it na it's because there's no, no we don't have a value defined here on b11 like we don't have any type of value but as soon as i type leather boots you can see that it's automatically filling it in here right uh, the description it's filling it in and if you want to guys you can also click column c and make sure you have text wrapping on so that way you can have um it, it just kind of wraps around and it won't like bleed over to the quantity box. So yeah, like kind of like that. And you can, again, always resize these, however, however, you know, you seem fit, but I'm, I won't write long descriptions. We'll just keep the description just like that. Um, and then the quantity, obviously it varies per transaction. So you can have 10 of these and now the price, right? For the price, we can kind of do the same thing. So we can actually just steal this formula here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Control C for copy. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste it here, but instead of index two, we're gonna do index three, which is the next row over in our database, which is going to be the price, right? Because we put it here, this is index one, two, and three. And we want this price here to be over here in this chart or in this uh, specific column. And then the tax, again, it's defined by you. you. I don't know however many tax percentage you have, so 15%. Um, and yeah, there you go. So now you don't have to type everything automatic. You don't have to type everything. It'll automatically do it for you. Now I get what you're saying, what you're thinking. You're probably like, okay, why, you know, why am I getting NAs, right? What do I do if I'm getting NA? So what you can do is you can actually go over here in this formula and you can type in if NA. So if NA basically means like, uh, if it's error, then it'll do this. So if NA, uh, will initially we want this value right we want the view lookup value but if for example there is an na error like if there's an na then we're just going to put a blank which could be denoted as double quotation marks because there's nothing in them a blank and then close that parentheses so basically we're doing an if na if this gives you an na then we're doing we're just going to return blank right to this cell but uh if there is a value then let's return that value and let's hit enter It'll stop giving you that NA error. And we're gonna do the same thing here to this uh, price as well. So let's do an if NA here, if NA, open parentheses. And then on the very end of your VLOOKUP, let's do a comma, double quotation here. So it's saying, okay, if it doesn't, if it can't do the VLOOKUP successfully, let's close it and let's just leave a blank. So there you go, it's perfect. Uh, it's not throwing us any errors. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go ahead and drag this down all the way. So if you drag it all the way down here, it should populate all the way. All these descriptions should have the VLOOKUP. So don't touch anything that's in the description field and don't touch anything that's in the price field because things will just automate themselves as you're filling in the data here. Okay, so you don't have to, it's not redundant. You have uh, an inventory data, table data of like what items, uh, description and prices. So you don't have to type it every single time. Now, with that being said, same thing could be applied to the co the company or customer name, right? So for example, here we have the customer name and our customer is Bob Smith, for example, right? Where does Bob Smith li live? Uh, he lives on 123 Main Street instead of Sesame Street. And he lives in Brooklyn, um, in New York. The zip code is 12345 and he is obviously in the United States. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here. So we have our customer um, database now, which is gonna be in the same uh, place as the item database. 
same thing here. Okay, so we're gonna change the street and we're gonna start automating, automating it. So let's do the same formula. We're gonna do equal sign. Now this time I'm just gonna write the if any right here. Okay, if na. When again we did that earlier. So the first value that um, if it's not an error, then we obviously want the actual value. Let's do a v lookup. Right. Open parentheses again. Every function that you're doing. And the search key is going to be this company name here, right? We want our company, customer name, whatever it is. Now, where is the range? Well, the range is going to be here. I'm going to drag E to all the way to H. So all these um, rows in these specific columns, we want to keep looking at them. And I'm going to hit a comma. And where is the index? Well, the name is index one. The address is index two. And then I'm going to close it, close the VLOOKUP. And I'm going to do, remember, a comma in case there is an error. Let's do a comma and let's do a blank here. So we don't, you know, it's just a blank empty. And then we're going to close that if any hit enter and boom, we should be good to go here. So, for example, here we have nothing here, right? It's not going to give us an NA error because we made it into an if any and it's supposed to give us an NA error, but we're replacing it with a blank. Now I can go ahead and copy this formula as well. And now the city state, I'm going to go ahead and delete this and control V for paste. And the city state is actually is in range three because we defined it here. One, two, three city state, Brooklyn, New York, and zip code and country is going to be range or index four. So go ahead and do the same thing here. Just delete this, paste this, and then change it to index four. So now what we have is a very, very fully automated uh, invoice sheet. Now I can go ahead and change this invoice to color to, you know, like a gray as well. So that way I can, I know what, what to put here. But if, for example, we put Bob Smith and again, capitalization does matter. don't forget. So Bob Smith, it, look at that. It automatically populates, um, the invoice, right? And then we want to put in the item. For example, we want to put in leather boots. Boom. Look at that automatically populates the description. Um, we're going to put, you know, they're buying three leather boots at a 15% tax rate. It is $138 and we're going to give them a $20 discount and bam, their grand total is going to be $118. Now you can even make this a larger cell. You can bold it. So that way it's easier to see. You can go ahead and change uh, the scaling of stuff. So that way it's less, you know, wide and it can be fit in a piece of paper. There you go. Change the item field here. Perfect. So now let's print. Let's see how it prints. And yeah, you can see it's it looks good. You can change the margins. You can change the zoom, the scale, whatever you want to format this uh, print to be. Hopefully you find this video on how to make an invoice useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and hit the subscribe button down below. And I'll see you all in the next video.